What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick 10s. We are installing another couple of kits into this Tracker Grizzly 1648. Right now I am prepping for this rear transom kit. Now, as always, the customer just wanted me to install the kit, but once they get their boat over here, they add stuff because they realize that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm not gonna have time to fit you back in my build schedule unless you're willing to wait a year. So I decided to go ahead and help him out. I'm gonna install a billage pump for him. So that's why I cut this access hole into this side corner panel in the back of this tracker. And I was gonna run my wires and hose up to the side, but this new 2023 model is a little bit different. They decided to add some extra tubing in here and a lot of extra foam all the way back to the transom. There's no access from the existing little splash well where your drain goes back up into that corner panel. So I had to improvise and I went ahead and I cut out the top of the floor in there and that revealed a tubing. I cut the top of that tubing out and folded down the sides and basically built like a little trough. And that gave me the ability to run his hoses and his wires through there. It's not ideal, it was a lot of extra work, but you gotta roll with the punches, guys. This kit's gonna turn out really sick. I'm about to get right into this video, guys. Thanks for All watching. All right, so moment of truth, guys. I built this frame at the shop. I did build this frame about three eighths of an inch smaller than the last frame that I built in the Tracker Grizzly 1648, just because I measured this one and that's how much smaller it was. Now, I don't know if there's gonna be another model that's smaller than this one. I've only seen two since I started doing this. I've got another one coming in that I'm gonna be working on very shortly to try to figure this out, but I'm trying to find the smallest measurement of all of them. That way I can build these kits to the smallest measurement. You can always show them out for the bigger ones. I have not dropped this in here yet. Let's see how this thing fits. It should be good because I did measure this one before I built this. Wow, that's pretty much spot on. Because it only needs to sit down an eighth of an inch lower than this deck. That will allow for the hatches to drop in there. And then the space from the hatches in the deck will be even. So. It's extremely close, very, very close. I might even have to shrink it down just a little bit smaller just to make sure it will fit in there. I don't know. I'm gonna do some more measurements on some other trackers. Like I said, I got another one coming in shortly and I'm hopefully gonna figure this thing out soon, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing installed. It's gonna be six and have a big hatch here, hatch on either side. This one's gonna be electrical panel hatch over here, all the switches and stuff. And I'm gonna put the faceplate on here. I'm gonna get this thing wrapped up. I got all of the hatch frames built. I did not build all the lids yet, but I brought them home just for the purpose that I want to figure out all this framing and stuff and make sure everything's gonna work. This one up here is going up into this front area right here. We're gonna move that old one and cut this out, drop that one in. And then I got the ones for the back deck for the rear transom kit. I'm gonna get that installed too. But the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and finish this thing up. This frame is welded solid on these pieces here. But these outside edges, I just tacked them on. I wasn't sure it was going to fit, and I didn't want to weld them solid. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. I'm going to weld these solid on both sides. Then I'm going to drop it in here and get this thing installed, finish up the face on it, and move on to the back deck, finish up that rear transom kick. I need to get that thing installed. Then on Tuesday, I'm going to take all these hatch frames back to the shop, build all the lids and hinges for them since Monday's a holiday, and then I'm going to drop them off at the powder coaters. Hopefully, I'll have those back by the end of the next week. And then I'll be able to wrap this thing up and start putting the turf in here. Let's go ahead and finish up all this metal work and do what we can with the framing. Let's get back to work.
All right, guys, so I got this whole front deck framing and sheeting finished up in here last night. Then I moved on to the back and I started to put that kit in there, but I had some more stuff to do. I got to put holes for wiring and stuff in there. And it was getting late. It was pushing midnight or a little after. So I just called it. And then I went to the shop today, as you just saw in the last clip, I did all of these hatches, got all these hatches built and I brought them home with me because there just wasn't enough time for me to finish them. I didn't leave the shop till like 6.30 or something, but I've got seven hatches here. These are all the hatches that are going into this boat. Now I did make all the lids, I bent them up. I welded these bigger ones and put stiffeners in here, but I got to put all these hinges in here. And the only reason I didn't stay for an extra hour and finish all that is because I left my M12 rivet gun here. And I wasn't about to put all of these rivets in here with the handgun, it's just, it's too much. I'm tired, my hands are hurting. I've got a lot going on right now. I'm getting ready to start this new big build. I've got a big live well. It's like an 80 gallon live well that I'm building for a cat fisherman. And I'm trying to keep my head above water with all the normal stuff that's coming through the company and all the hatch orders. I've got about four or five other hatch orders that I've got to get done too. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, then you know that my homeboy Austin has been like my right hand man. I have taught him all kinds of stuff about boats and he's been killing it. And all of a sudden, like two weeks ago, he literally just told me, hey, he bought a house and he's moving and he's gone. His last day was last week. So I don't have any help at all with any of this aluminum stuff. So it's kind of compiling on to me with all of these hatch orders because he was killing it, knocking these things out quick. He was good at it and I have no one to do them. So I've got to do all of these hatches. That's why I'm working on it at home tonight. But Austin actually moved to Galax, Virginia. And he bought a nice house out there. It's in the middle of nowhere. He's a super cool dude. He really likes nature and he wanted to live out in the mountains. I don't blame him. I mean, the houses are cheaper out there. He got a nice house, got a detached garage. He's actually going to start doing his own thing out there with the welding and stuff. He's going to set up a little shop. So if you guys are in that area or want any more information about that, I'm going to leave a link to his Instagram profile in this video so you can go check that out. But I'm going to start networking with him. He's picking up a welder and some machinery. He's going to set up his own little shop so that he can do builds and stuff. I mean, he worked with me on just boats for about a year. He learned a lot. We built four or five small builds. We did the entire jet boat build together. I trust that he knows what he's doing, especially with the metal work and framework and welding aspect. I mean, he's a killer welder. So it's going to be a big opportunity for him. And it's going to be a good opportunities for you guys too, if you live in that area. And it works out well because I can network with him, but it really sucks because I'm missing him at the shop. I'm out here doing this stuff when this could have been done and I could have just dropped him in and made sure everything was right. But I got to finish these up tonight because it's already Tuesday night and I've got to drop these off at the powder coaters tomorrow morning. And I'm going to pick them up on Thursday because they're closed on Friday. And I want to have all these hatches here because this weekend I plan on permanently putting them in this boat and turfing the entire thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys back on a hyperlab. I'm going to get all these hinges installed in here. I still got to weld the corners of these smaller ones. And I'm going to finish these hatches up completely. Get all the drain tubes and everything attached to them. Drop them in, dry fit everything. And then I'm going to finish up this back deck. I got to get that rear transom kit installed. I'm going to have to put my holes for all my electrical and the plumbing for the bilge pump and everything. Get all that wrapped up. Got to get all that done tonight. So it's going to be a late night, guys. I'm going to put you guys back on the hyperlabs. Let's get back to work. What up guys, we're out here in the powder coaters. Got a sound of freedom going off out here right by the Air Force Base, but looks like all my ashes are out here drying. Let's go check them out. These things look good. All right, so as you just saw in the last clip, I picked up all of the hatches today. That's service. I literally dropped them off yesterday 
and I'm picking them up today. They're all done. They're powder coated black. They're going to be sweet. I'm going to put them in here in just a minute, but I've got to get this back transom kit finished up. And I got these two leveler pieces on either side. This one, I just took out of here. I'm getting ready to install this one, but I got to put some holes in it first. I'm going to run some LED lights in here. I'm going to have green interior lights on both the port and starboard. And I'm working with a new company. It's called customledinc.com if you want to reach out to them. And if you want to reach out to me, I can give you pricing. I can hook you up with them direct, whatever you want to do. I'm looking forward to using these lights though because they look pretty sick. I haven't even powered them up yet, but I've got a good feeling that they're going to be pretty bright. But I've got to get these holes in here first. So I'm going to put like a two and a half or a three inch hole right in this corner. It's going to be buried up inside of this corner panel right here. You're never even going to be able to see it unless you know it's there and you reach up in there to do it. So it's gonna be perfect for him to get wires up through there. I also have to run the hose going from his village pump up underneath that side with the through hole fitting. He's gonna come back and install a rear nav light post into the top of this too. And that will help him run his wires back down and up into the where the battery's gonna be up in the compartment in the front deck. What I'm gonna do is put you guys back on the hyperlapse. I'm gonna put both of these leveler pieces on the port and starboard. I'm gonna run my angle across here for support and try to finish off my transom angles and get this whole back transom deck figured out and finished up. I'm gonna install my village pump, run the wiring and stuff for that. And I'm gonna get ready to install these LED lights. Let's get back to work guys.
All right, so we have made a ton of progress with this build. So let's check this thing out. So we've got the bilge pump installed, hoses ran up and through the hole on the side over there. The wires for that are also ran up underneath of this. Now this is a little faceplate panel. I put that in and that will give him access if he needs to remove that. Well, he probably won't because so you can just easily fish more wires through there if he needs to. And the thing works out good. It was a little bit of a pain in the butt to install, but now it's done. We did get the back transom kit installed. Now I welded this in here. It also has rivets through the sides right here. And then I welded this angle in here. Now this angle could be put in here with another piece of angle as a clip, riveted through the face here and through the side. And then this angle right here, this is basically just like to finish this back area off. It makes it look cool and aggressive. I just took some rivets and shot them up through here to install that. We got one on either side, the port and starboard. It finishes the transom area off, it looks good. And this is the perfect size now for our hatch to drop in. And these leveler pieces bring this back deck up to the same height as this bench seat. So that's the rear transom kit installed, ready to go. Then we have the rear bench kit. This one was pretty simple. The way this one was made, it didn't have this gap up in here. Some of the older trackers had like a two inch gap right here. So we didn't have to worry about that. And these pieces I made here were actually bigger. These were 24 and a half. So I'm probably gonna have to up the size of these little pieces right here for the fillers. It's 24 and a half inches, but they dropped right in, shot some rivets in through here. And then you can see over here, put this little mark right there. That's basically just a Sharpie mark. That told me where this rib is. So I knew where to put these other rivets in here to hold this thing in tight. Now this whole compartment is not painted and it does bother me. So before I put all these hatches in here, I might end up painting this compartment too. But let's talk about this front deck kit. Now this front deck kit fit really well. This whole top frame, this is how I can want to make these and sell them and ship them to your door. You're just going to drop them in. You're going to shoot some rivets up to the side right here and up to the face of this angle. That will hold it. You got to drop it down an eighth of an inch from the existing deck because when I put all these hatches in here, it'll be flush. Right now it's in the eighth of an inch low. The vertical supports for this. Now the way that this kit's going to come, it's going to come with an inch and a half angle down here. I used a one inch angle because I already had that here, but I'm going to send the kit with an inch and a half angle. And these are going to be one inch square tubing risers. Now these pieces are going to be pre-cut. They're probably going to be about 13 inches because these ended up being like, I think 12 or 11 and seven eighths. But I did notch them, you can see, and I welded it from the face right here, from the front side, top and bottom. But if you're not gonna weld them, you could just come back and put a little angle clip in this corner right here, rivet it into here and down through here. Same thing on the side. It's very simple. Before I put this bottom angle in here, I just took a framing square, and ran it here. That way I knew where to put that bottom angle in, shoot your rivets in, put three or four supports in there. And then this face sheet, this face sheet is about 59 inches from here across at the top and 49 at the bottom. I'm going to send you this piece. It's going to be probably 13 inches this direction and 60 inches that way. Now you're going to have to cut that. It's very simple to cut. The tracker does drop down a little bit deeper in the center, but it doesn't really make a difference because if this piece didn't run all the way up to the top right here, you've got an inch and a half to play around with. Now I did bring mine up flush, but I've been doing this for a long time. And if this was dropped down a half inch or even three quarters, you could still get a rivet in here. It's not going to matter because once you drop these hatches in and you turf over it, it's all going to be waterproof and nobody's going to know that this sheet was a half inch short. It doesn't really matter. So you're either going to have to build a cardboard template for this or just do it like I did. I figured out my spots for the lowest dimensions in here. And that's what I did. I cut this off at like 12 and a half inches. So I cut the whole sheet 12 and a half. Then I measured my top measurement from port to starboard at the top of these gunnels right here and then at the bottom. And I basically just 59 across the top, 49 across the bottom. So I subtracted five inches from either side and cut it down. It fits really well. You might have to grind it a little bit to get it in there, but it's pretty simple. This took me about two hours to install. Now, obviously I welded it. I did weld it up underneath here too. And those are some hard welds to do overhead inside of there. 
but same type of deal. If you can't weld, put a little angle clip in here, shoot them down to this face of this and recess them, and then shoot them into the side of this tube right here. It will support this deck. It's not that hard. It's very easy to do. And this kit right here is going to be customizable. So obviously the outsides aren't going to change, but if you don't want to have three hatches or if you just want to have one big hatch, you know, you can tell me what you want. And the limitation from here to here is going to be pretty much set around 18 inches. But as far as the actual drop in hatches, they could be a hatch that went all the way from port to starboard. Or honestly, you could probably access this storage area on the port and starboard side with just this hatch right here. If you just wanted one hatch and then you just sheet over this. I did cut out this front hatch that was already in here and you can see we only moved it forward about three inches, but it makes a world of difference because that hatch was tiny. It was a small opening inside of the hatch. This really opens it up and there's a lot of storage inside of here and you can actually access a whole lot easier inside of here with that bigger hole. And this is actually going to be cool because it's going to give him a whole lot more room. I mean, he can fit a ton of tackle and stuff inside of here. So this is definitely a cool upgrade from the hatch he had. I'm glad that he decided to go with this because I think he's going to be real happy with it later on down the road. Now that I've got all of this stuff done, I've only got some little small pieces that I got to finish up. I'm going to put some dividers inside of here, you know, on both sides to separate all three of these compartments. And in the back, I'm going to put a transom puck back there so you can mount his transducer on it. So let's say you do purchase one of these kits from me and you're at this stage of the game. Or if you just did all this framing on your own and this is where you're at with your build and you want to separate these compartments. Now, the way I would do this, I would build a three sided pan. Basically, I'm going to take a measurement from this point to where this existing front deck is and up. I'm not gonna bring it all the way up tight because you might wanna run wires and stuff across there. And once you drop these hatches in, they stick down about an inch and an eighth. So you don't have to bring them all the way up to the top. So I would measure up and leave myself about a one inch gap up here. And then once you get those measurements, you could just send me an email with a quick little drawing. I'm gonna build a pan that's basically gonna fit in here from left to right and vertical height that I want. And I'm gonna turn like a one inch lip on it so I can shoot rivets into this front deck rivets into the floor, and then I'll shoot some rivets in here, but I'm gonna shoot these from the face through here. That way the back of the rivets isn't sticking out here because this is gonna be turp. Very simple, and something like that is gonna be cheap. I can build you those little pans like that. They're gonna be thin, probably out of like 063 aluminum, and you might only be looking at like $25 a piece for those plus shipping. That's the way I would do it. So if you're interested in that, you guys send me an email and I'll hook you up with some little pieces like that. If you don't want me to do it, if you think you can do it yourself, the simplest way I would do it is just cut a sheet, a flat sheet that fits in here. If you don't have a way to bend the sheet, then just cut a flat sheet and then take a piece of angle, just like this piece down on the floor right here, same type of deal. And you just run it to the floor across here and run it up. And then you can shoot some rivets through your sheet, hold it up. Same thing on the face and same thing here. You can put little angles. You don't even have to have a solid angle. It could be a little two inch clip here and here and here and here. Same type of deal. It's not that hard. Now it is crunch time. I mean, we've pretty much built out this entire boat in this video. This video is getting pretty long, but I've still got a lot of work to do. I gotta finish up these two panels in here. I'm gonna get both those divider pans done. I'm gonna weld this transom puck on the back, and then I'm probably gonna end up painting inside of here, and more than likely I'm gonna do paint inside of there. I just cannot let this thing go without it being a finished product and looking good with paint everywhere, so I'm gonna have to do that too. But I did receive the turf from the customer. This turf color is sick. I'm gonna show you guys that in just a minute because it's one I have never used and it's one that I've wanted to use. So I'm pretty hyped about that. This boat is not gonna build itself, guys. I gotta put y'all back on the hyperlapse and then I'll catch back up with you to wrap this thing up once I get this stuff finished up and all these hatches installed and we'll get this thing prepped for turf. Let's get back to work.
right, guys, so we got all the hatches put into the boat. It turned out sick. Now the rear deck is perfect. We have two kits in here. This is the rear transom kit, which comes with this big hatch. It's 16 by 42. It fits right in between these two pods on either side of these trackers. And this gives you a lot of storage inside of here. Now he's probably gonna have his gas tank inside of here. And the other side is gonna be open game. And right in front of that, we opened up this rear bench seat. Now this is the rear bench kit. And this comes with two 20 by 20s or 18 by 20s. These are 18 by 20s. These open towards the outside of the boat and it gives you a ton of storage inside of there. Now he is putting his batteries up in the front deck. So all of that room inside of there, that's all for tackle. That's the biggest storage compartment he has in this entire boat. He's still got a huge floor in here. Now, this is wide open. He wants to put a big cooler in here where he decides to start duck hunting. He's got plenty of room to hang out in the middle of his boat. Now up in this front deck, we've got three storage compartments in here. Now this one on this side, this is just for storage. And the one in the middle is gonna house three lithium batteries. He's still gonna have some room for storage inside of there. And then he's got another hatch on the other side. That's gonna be his electrical panel hatch. I'm going to install him a pan inside of there. That way he can fit his switches and his fuse block and all that good stuff inside of there. And underneath that, he's gonna house his black box for his Garmin live scope. And up in the front of that, we have a new hatch we installed. It came with a stock hatch inside here, but this thing was small. It was thin. The quality of it is nothing compared to the hatches that I build. And it's going to be way better this way. I mean, look at all this room he has inside of here. This is a gigantic hatch. And he's going to be able to fit a ton of tackle inside of here. This is probably going to be his go-to storage for all of his tackle while he's fishing in the boat. Now, the only thing I have left to do in this rig is put some LED lights in here and build a little pan that's gonna go inside of this electronics hatch. So I'm gonna hook up these LED lights in here and I am hyped about this because I have not used these yet. I've opened them up and looked at them and the quality of them is superior to the Amazon lights. Man, these things are sick. They are from customleds.inc.com. I'm gonna share a link in the description, but I'm gonna get these things opened up and hook these up in the next video. But I want to share with you guys the turf that's going here because I'm hyped about this turf. It's a turf color I've never used and I am excited to get to use a new color and I think it's gonna be really sick. I'm gonna turn this camera around guys and I'm gonna show you this turf. Let's wrap this video up. All right, so let's check out this turf guys. I've been looking at this turf for a while. This is a hydro turf colorway. This is a two inch cut groove. It is the gray wood grain color with a black backer. This color is sick guys. I've been looking at this for a while. This is a newer color. It came out maybe eight months ago. I don't know, but I have not used this in a boat yet. And I'm hyped that the customer wanted to use this because I've wanted to install this in a boat. It's going to look killer inside of here. I mean, this is one of the colorways that I would probably put in my own boat if I were to build another rig. But this thing's gonna be sick. I can't wait to install it. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt because it is a cut groove turf. And I gotta keep all these lines going all the way from bow to stern. I'm gonna get this turf completely installed in here in the next video. I'm gonna run these LED lights in here. Hit that like and subscribe button, guys. Let me know what you think about what I'm doing. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. If you want any of the merch, I got a bunch of hats, shirts, sweatshirts. I'm trying to update it as soon as I can. It's expensive to buy all this stuff, but I know you guys are gonna support me and I do appreciate that. You can find all this merch on tricktens.net. Now I'm gonna get back to watching my Cowboys because they are smacking up on them G-Man tonight. I know you guys gonna hate on me for that too, but it's all good. I'll see y'all next time. I gotta get back to work.